Good afternoon, Facebook family and friends, and welcome to another Midday Moment with Pastor Craig Ponder coming to you from the house here at New Salem Baptist Church. Kind of a dreary day. Rain's finally starting to get here, looks like. I uh, hope that you're uh, warm and dry and wherever you find yourself today. But we um, thank for the moment again to be able to come just for a little while and, and uh, speak into your life with a little bit of an encouragement and a song together and pray together and I hope that you enjoy these moments as much as I do and we're just going to continue them as long as the Lord gives us liberty uh, I don't know what the future looks like um, but it um, I'm enjoying it so we, we'll just let the Lord guide us and uh, uh, give us direction and hopefully I'll be open to hearing when he speaks but uh, let's um, let's pray together Father God I thank you for the blessings of a new day Lord, I praise you, Lord, for the spring that's in the air, Lord, for the warmer temperatures, Lord, and the, the blessings, Lord, of, of, of your presence that shows itself in, in so many ways. And Lord, I thank you for the blessings of the internet and the, the, able, the ability that we have um, to be able to come out into people's lives, in their homes, in their, their cars, or wherever they find themselves, Lord. It's a, it's a gloriously remarkable day and age that we're living to where we can touch people's lives like we do. And I pray you bless these moments, Lord, that it would just be a word of encouragement. I pray, Lord, you'd use me, uh, uh, make me a vessel suitable for your glory, for your purposes, Lord. And I pray, God, that you'd forgive my sin and speak through me, Lord, today for your glory and for the, for the um, uplifting of your people's heart. Lord, I pray a blessing on many today that our heart goes out to that are sick in body. Father, many that are, are, are battling uh, various circumstances of life that shows itself, Lord, in a whole lot of different ways. The enemy's attacking. I know families, Lord, that are worried and concerned. And uh, Father, it seems that at times the enemy's winning. But Lord, we, we have confidence in your faithfulness. And we have confidence, Lord, that none of this has caught you by surprise. And you've never left us. You've never forsaken us. And we find great comfort in that. So I pray, Lord, your blessing on many that are listening today. Lord, all of their circumstances of life, Lord, I think of, of Jack Young and, and Miss Rose, Lord, as she's faithful to tend to his needs. I pray, God, you continue, Lord, to strengthen them, Lord, with your presence. And, Father, we think of those that's in the nursing homes or those that's home today uh, just not feeling well. I pray a blessing upon them. Now, I ask you blessing to continue, Lord, upon us as pastors as we get closer and closer to our, our, our church's reopening. I ask you, Lord, to provide the answers even before we know what the questions are in every situation. Again, bless us today. Bless us as we teach, and uh, let it be a word of encouragement, Lord, to those that need a word from me today, wherever they find themselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to do the song at the end, and I think you'll understand why once we get there. But we come today to lesson number two in the Gospel and Dr. Seuss, utilizing the writings of uh, the great American author uh, just as, a, as an illustration of what the Bible has to say. And, and we said that yesterday in the introduction that you, uh, to not panic, that Pastor Ponder hasn't lost his mind, uh, that we're not, we're not preaching and teaching from the books of Dr. Seuss. Uh, there's simply an opportunity for sharing, much like a parable, much like um, Jesus taught using very um, practical, everyday teachings uh, to bring about heavenly messages and spiritual truths. And with that being said, today we come to Horton Hatches an Egg. Horton Hatches an Egg. Let me, let me very briefly summarize the story of Horton, in case you haven't read the book. Uh, it, it begins with a, a, a bird named Maisie. Uh, Maisie was a lazy bird that didn't like sitting on eggs. She found it boring and she wanted to get off and, and see the world. So she asked her friend Horton, an elephant, to come sit on the egg while she takes a vacation. Well, Horton agrees and, and he comes and uh, he props up a little tree so it can support him. And he sits on that little nest, and that little egg through the fall and through the icy cold of, of winter and right on into the springtime. And then three hunters come and they find Horton sitting on this egg and they capture him and they haul him away and put him on display at the circus. They take, they take Horton, tree, egg, nest, all of it, and take him and put him on display at the circus. Well, of course, Brother, Brother Horton doesn't like being a captive, but his sense of dedication uh, would not let him leave the egg. 
He said he would sit on that egg. Uh, and there's one line in the story that um, stands out uh, for this lesson today. Uh, several times in the story, uh, when Horton was at the lowest, when it seems like he wanted to give up, when it seemed like it, it was getting too hard and it was too cold or too windy or just too much aggravation, Horton would say this to himself. That's the inspiration for today's little devotion. Horton said, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. An elephant is faithful 100%. So you read that story, and you can't help but admire uh, the commitment, uh, the dedication of Horton the elephant. Because the truth of the matter is, no matter how hard you and I may try, not one of us can claim to be faithful 100%. We've all got those moments. We, we've all had those moments. Total faithfulness eludes us many times. Think about the idea of total faithfulness. If your car starts one out of every three times, <laughs> would you call it reliable? If you lay out of work once or twice a month, are you viewed as a loyal employee? If your refrigerator stops working uh, just for a day or two every once in a while, do you say, well, it works most of the time. Would you be satisfied with that? If your water heater provides you an ice cold shower two or three days a week, how dependable is that? If you was to miss a couple of loan payments on the house or on the car every year, would the bank come to you and say, oh, that's okay. You know, 10 out of 12 ain't bad. Well, of course not. We all know what it means to be faithful, and we strive for that. We, we recognize the importance of that. We all know what it means to be unfaithful. And there's a man in the Old Testament, Jeremiah is his name, uh, and he, uh, he was a man that knew a thing or two about faithfulness. He, he stuck with the Lord through some really rough, rough days in the life of the nation of Israel. Jeremiah is also known as the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was the author of the book of Lamentations. And that's where we find our text today. If you want to start finding the book of Lamentations, it comes right after the book of Jeremiah. Uh, the book of Lamentations it really consists of five melancholy-sounding poems uh, where Jeremiah is, is mourning over the utter destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of the temple at the hands of the invading, conquering Babylonians. But Lamentations chapter 3 is a, is, a, is a wonderful moment in this writing where in the midst of it all, in the midst of all that he was facing in his life, in the midst of all of his worries and anxieties and lamenting, that's where the book gets its name, in the midst of all of his lamenting, Jeremiah comes to the place where he finds hope. Jeremiah comes to the place where he finds some light. He finds some joy in the midst of his circumstances. Jeremiah had experienced darkness. Yes, he had as a people and as an individual. But in the midst of darkness, he found some light. He had experienced pain in his life. But in the midst of the pain, he catches a glimpse of the providential hand of God. He had witnessed destruction in his life. But it's here that he begins to see divine destiny at work in his life. I want to read for you a passage from Lamentations chapter number 3. I'm going to start at verse number 19. Lamentations 3 verse number 19. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his, his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh. Him. You think back to your life uh, as a child of God and a follower of Jesus Christ. Think back uh, to the times of your own life. Think about how that in the midst of your story, think about how that in the midst of your miseries, 
Think about how in the midst of just daily living and the different ways that that looks, each of us have those differences in our lives or as unique as we are individuals. How that in the midst of your murkiness, how that in the midst of, of life's agony, in the midst of the hard, hard times of life, you look back on that and you see that God's hand has been upholding us. His love has been encompassing us in every direction. His power is revealed to us most, most prevalent, most beautifully, most abundantly in the midst of our chaos. I think somebody out there today in Facebook land or YouTube world, however you're watching this, I believe someone out there this morning needs a picture of God. I, I want to try to plant in your Holy Spirit inspired and blessed imagination. I want you to try to picture, if you can, a loving Heavenly Father, a God that, that flung the universe into existence, a God that loved you enough to send His only begotten Son to die for your sin. I want you to try to picture Him stepping into your circumstances, whatever it is that your life is bringing at you right now in the midst of all the uncertainty with your job and with the school system and your kids' future and finances and maybe medical needs in your family or your parents' lives. I want you to think about a Heavenly Father stepping in the midst of that and speaking this right into your very heart. I meant what I said and I said what I meant. I'll always be faithful 100%. We're talking about God's unfailing faithfulness and how the unfaithful, unfailing faithfulness of God means this, that he means everything he says and he does everything he says he'll do. We can be certain of that, dear friend. We can be certain that he'll always be 100% God, 100% all the time or not, he would not be God at all. So I encourage you today. I want to encourage you with the fact that we have a heavenly father, a good, good father, as one songwriter said. We have a heavenly father that is faithful to keep his word to you. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, and verse number 9, that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. In other words, God always does what he promises. He always performs what he promises to do. I meant what I said. I said what I meant. I will always be faithful 100%. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse number 56, the Bible says, There hath not failed one word of his good promise, which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant. I'll tell you something, dear friend, I, I don't know it all. There's much that I don't understand, much that I don't know, but I have experienced enough in my life to make me know that I can trust him and I'll keep on trusting him. I kind of feel like the psalmist said in Psalm 37, verse number 25, where he says, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I've, I've sipped enough nectar out of the sweet rose of Sharon that I believe I'll just keep on sipping. I've tasted enough from the bread of heaven that I'm going to keep right on eating from that same table. I've climbed enough mountains. I'm going to keep on climbing. I've won enough battles. I think I'll keep on fighting. I've sailed through enough storms. I'm going to keep on sailing with him at the helm. I've walked through enough devils. I'm going to keep on walking. I've crawled through enough valleys. I'm going to keep on crawling. I've shouted my way out of defeat, and I'm going to keep on shouting. I've prayed my way out of bondage, and I'm keeping keep on praying. How can you say that, preacher? Why is that so evident in your life? It's because I know him to be faithful. I've proven, his, he's proven himself to be faithful, and he reveals his faithfulness in every area of our lives. If you've not got it yet, if you've not come across the point of this teaching today, it's a simple, simple truth. The point I'm trying to make is that God is reliable. He is faithful. He can be trusted. When the Bible promises me in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28 that all things work together for good to them that love God, you can believe that. 
We serve a faithful God. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you something. If you've not realized this yet, then you've not lived very long. But man will forsake you. Your friends will let you down from time to time. Your preacher, your church may disappoint you from time to time. Your family may turn their backs on you. But God is faithful. Look through the scriptures. Do a search sometime. Do a word search of the word faithful. I, I did. I, do a Google search for verses on the faithfulness of God. And look at all the verses of scripture you'll find. You'll find comfort that the theme of the faithfulness of God is apparent throughout scripture. Let me throw a couple at you. Psalm 36, verse number 5. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Psalm 89, verse number 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. Psalm 119, verse number 90, your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. Again, somebody listening to me today, somebody has stumbled across this by accident. Some of you have tuned in a day today as you always are faithful to do. Some of you are listening to me for the first time, and whatever the case may be, whichever one of those groups you may find yourself in, God stands before you today using this old knucklehead of a preacher to, to tell you and declare into your life today that God is speaking into somebody's life and said, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. I'll always be faithful 100%. You take him at his word you take the Lord at his word because his word will stand when the mountains crumble into the oceans. Trust him. If you've never trusted him as your Lord and Savior, that's the place to start. If you'll cry out to him, he says that he's faithful and just. He'll forgive you of your sins and he'll cleanse you of all of your unrighteousness. You experience the faithfulness of God in your life wherever you may find yourself today. Amen. If you haven't figured it out yet, I bet you probably can anticipate the song for today. May this word of this song be a blessing to your heart. Listen to this great word. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercy. Great is thy 
Dear friend, rest comfortably today in the fact that God is faithful. Tomorrow, Wednesday, in another midday moment, we'll be looking at Bartholomew and the Ublick. And the thought will be about repentance. A very important word for us as God's children. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow for another midday moment.